keeping this backdrop in consideration, this, web this webinar has been organized with an aim to provide a platform for the researchers and students across the scientific disciplines on the various aspects of nanocatalysis and to come up with some novel ideas. Jami Media Islamia, New Delhi, is going to show light on the development of nanomaterials of various applications, especially in the catalytic field. A hearty welcome to you, sir. I also welcome all faculty members, researchers, and students of this college, other colleges of UT of Delhi and Tiffany, other colleges and universities of India who are attending this webinar. We all understand that the importance of science, technology, and innovation in our day-to-day -day lives and the ways in which they are transforming the world. Recently, nanotechnology has great impacted our lives. I believe nanotechnology is science, engineering, technology conducted at the nanoscale in the range of 1 to 100 nanometer. Scientists and engineers are having great success making materials at the nanoscale to take advantage of enhanced properties such as higher strength, lighter weight, increased electrical conductivity and chemical reactivity compared to other large-scale equivalents. I am hopeful that today's talk will stimulate useful interactions and inter collaborations. I feel that by participating in this webinar, we are in the right place and at the right time. Together, let us accelerate the exchange of ideas and scaling up of good practices. I am confident that you will find new ideas, fresh energy and our partnership by participating in this event. Once again, I welcome you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is in novel. We know that nanomaterial are a very special class of material which has particle size ranging from 1 to 100 nanometer or we can simply define them as a material possessing at minimum one external dimension measuring 1 to 100 nanometer. Due to their small size and high surface area, they possess a very ex exciting <coughs> novel physical and chemical properties and phenomena not found in their bulk counterpart. These unique properties went to exchange the idea. I hope this webinar will and organizing committee members, Dr. Shakil Ahmed, Mr. Mundasir Ahmed, Mr. Mahmoud. Chemistry, Jama Mili Islamia, New Delhi. He was recently conferred with Molana Abul Kalam Azad Excellence Award of Education uh, by Shiksha Kalyan Foundation in 2021. He has received Distinguished Scientist Award for Outstanding Contribution in Chemical Sciences by Indian Association of Solid State Chemists and Allied Sciences, Scientists for the year 2019. He has received President's Inspire Teacher Recognition Award from President of India in 2015. He was conferred with BN Kailo Discuss Medal in 2011 for significant contribution in research in solid state chemistry and allied areas. He has stayed in world's top 2% of scientists in both coveted lists, including career long. For NASI, he is acting as an editorial board member of various international journals, such as Scientific Reports, Nature Publishing, Future Trends in Nanotechnology, Act of Scientific Pharmaceutical Sciences, etc. Materials Today Proceedings, based in Elsevier Journal. He was a visiting scientist at ICMS, GMCASR Bangalore, uh, for the year 2015 and 2016. He has delivered more than 105, that's 105, of 40, and IT index of 84. He has also co authored two books on nanoscience and nano nanotechnology. He has acted as a principal co investigator of nine research projects with a total grant of around 3 crore and 50 lakhs. With this brief introduction, I request Professor Tauti Ahmad to please start his talk. Please, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ishaad, for uh, not the brief, but it, it was a detailed introduction. Thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, I would like to thank the head chemistry, uh, Dr. Umaruddin Rasa, principal 
of the college and as well as Professor Devinder Kumar and all organizing committee members uh, for inviting me uh, for this uh, prestigious program and uh, asking me to share some of our research work that we are actually doing uh, in my research lab here at Jamila Islamia. About this program, so we asked that uh, the missile, uh, we similarly we can correlate the meter dimension with the nanometer dimension and one meter equals to the one billion nanometer. So, or one uh, nanometer uh, is defined as the one billionth part of the meter. So, as a number, this number is one billion number. And for example, if I have a rod of one meter length and if I cut this rod into one billion pieces, then the length of one piece is one nanometer. And this dimension, this particular dimension is smaller than the wavelength of light. So basically, actually, when you approach to this uh, dimension, then actually, you can actually play with the uh, actually atomic scale particles. So why? Because the typical size of any atom is around 1 to 2 angstrom, strong. And in 1 nanometer dimension, you can actually arrange uh, 5 to 10 atoms. So basically, nanomaterials are the fine materials as the principles are said. The, the size of these materials uh, is in the range of 1 to 100 nanometers. So in the nanomaterials may be of various types. That is, you can classify these materials in terms of like nanoparticles, nanostructures, portion nanostructures, nanorods, nanowires, nanotubes, nanocylinders, bipods, tripods or the nanocomposite materials. Actually, if you have the multi-directional or multi-dimensional material, then one dimension, at least one dimension should be in the nano range. For example, if you have the spherical structure, then you will have only one diameter. So, diameter should be in the nano range. But if you have a rod, if you have bipods or tripods, then they will have more than one dimension. So, at least one dimension. Materials uh, could have fine applications in um, uh, many devices, electronic alignment of electrons and because of their small size, they will have very high surface area and because of their small size, they dipose either the electric or the magnetic, they are highly disordered on the surface. And today I am going to speak on the paralysis part which is associated with the energy as well as organic uh, transformation. So, the, the two major applications where actually the whole world actually is concentrating uh, in the, the present scenario, I will speak over here. So actually when we talk about the material, if you have the different nanostructures or different materials that exist in nature, then you can classify these materials on the basis of their dimension. For example, if you move from few centimeter to the few nanometer dimension, then the nature of the object may change from football to uh, fluorine. And meanwhile, you can see the different objects of different sizes, uh, like human hair, uh, blood cells, and viruses of different dimensions. So, what is important in, in it? Actually, when you actually uh, reduce the size of the objects from uh, bulk to the uh, very fine nanomaterials, then what happens? The number of atoms at the surface they will increase, and the, actually, the surface energy is associated with the number of surface atoms to surface energy. And surface energy is proportional to the surface area in smaller cubes. Surface area will increase uh, from this particular cube 6 to 12. And if I broke down these, these 8 cubes into 60 smaller cubes, the surface area will increase from 12 to 24 square centimeters. So, what is the mathematical calculation? For example, if I am having a cube, of two meter, uh, two centimeter uh, dimension, then actually uh, we can calculate the area. How would you calculate the covered area? Actually, any cube having the six covered surfaces. And if I am able to calculate the area of one surface, then I have to multiply by number of covered surfaces. So I have to multiply by six because actually any cube having the six covered surfaces, six surfaces. So the, the, there is one, one square. Uh, either this will be square or rectangle and its area will be length into uh, width so it will be 2 into 2 right so 2 into 2 then you have to multiply by the number of surfaces so you have to multiply by 6 so the area of the cube of edge length 2 centimeter is 24 square centimeter 
So just I am reducing the dimension of this two centimeter cube into one centimeter cube. Now you can calculate very easily how many cubes you can generate from two centimeter cube. So for one centimeter cube length, we can generate eight smaller cubes. One from this side, other from this side, then back side, up side. So total eight cubes will be generated. So if I have to calculate the covered area of these eight cubes, then I have to multiply the uh, surface area of one cube with number of cubes, this eight, and the area of one cube will be one into one and into six. That is the number of surfaces, and then you have to multiply by eight, so it will come forty-eight square centimeter. So just by reducing, just imagine, just by reducing. The edge length of two centimeter cube from uh, two to one centimeter, the covered area will increase from 24 to 48 square uh, centimeter. And here in uh, actually uh, nanotechnology or the nano material, when we play with the nano structures, actually we reduce the area from bulk to nano dimension nearly thousand times. So now you can imagine uh, what will be the, the impact on the surface area changes, and then you can correlate with the area, surface area with the catalysis part because actually the major important or direct impact parameter for nano catalysis is the surface area. So this is the important property and when you do any kind of catalysis, the surface area measurement is the important point and everyone has to report the surface area and porosity of the material actually to explain the type of the catalysis. So as the particle size become very small, this is a very basic slide. Generally, uh, these slides I will uh, I generally show for the undergraduate or uh, uh, or nearly postgraduate students. So as the particle size become very small, generally when we change the size of the objects from millimeter to the micrometer, then there is no change in the proper property. But when we change the size of the objects from micrometer to the nanometer, then most of the physical and chemical laws differs and because of the variation and the difference in the physical and the chemical laws, the associated properties like the electronic, physical and chemical properties will change. For example, the quantum size effect, optical band gap will change because the energy level becomes discrete, the optical band gap uh, will increase when we reduce the size of the object. So physical properties, generally actually melting point, as you know, uh, this is the uh, uh, intensity property actually doesn't change, but actually when we talk about the same material, just by reducing the size, the melting point will change. Why? Because that is strength due to their high surface area. And uh, because of their small size, they can be easily actually uh, transported uh, in, in any kind of uh, environment, either the porous structure or any kind of the material. They will have high durability and the high resistance to degradation. So because of the uh, rich properties of the nanomaterials, the, actually, the, every discipline or the scientists, whether they belong to engineering background, bio background, actually if there are a lot of branches in engineering, bio background or the uh, natural science background, they have the common platform that is called as the nano science and the uh, nanotechnology. So what are the three stems of nano? Actually, is nano is new. Uh, uh, so actually, this the lighter just stuff, this is placed in British Museum London, uh, dating from 4th century AD. So actually when this stuff is actually seen in transmitted light, it appears as in red in color and in reflected light, it appears as green in color. So that time actually, uh, it was actually appears as uh, some kind of miracle actually. And nowadays it, this is clear actually, uh, there is no miracle. And uh, the nanomaterials uh, in the uh, different uh, absorption uh, of light, they exhibit the different colors and uh, here, Actually, this is a very well, well established fact. Uh, Ishad is here. Ishad made several gold nanoparticles and published several papers on gold nanomaterials in different size. And he has stabilized, stabilized gold nanomaterials in different colors. And this is theoretical aspect of the gold nanoparticles. So the gold nanomaterials making the building blocks from atomic to microscopic uh, sizes, and uh, we could observe uh, the changes in the color. So the nanotechnology or the nano science. Having its root from the very famous uh, lab, there is actually a basic difference between nanoscience and the nanotechnology. Actually, uh, generally, I actually uh, uh, give the name of my uh, branch as nanochemistry because actually uh, I am doing chemistry at nanoscale. So, the 
physics generally whatever they do in uh, nano generally they call as the nano uh, making in our research lab and uh, we are that uh, uh, looking over uh, the the production of the hydrogen which is actually called as the green or the green energy and we also do uh, the organic transformation reactions uh, that came under the flagship of the environmental remediation uh, these materials also have in the application in cosmetics, sensors, uh, solar cells, photovoltaic uh, applications. So since actually my uh, uh, talk is based on nanocatalysis, actually nanocatalysis is uh, further classified into uh, various parts like the heterogeneous nanocatalysis, photocatalysis, electrocatalysis, photoelectrocatalysis. All kind of catalysis, photoelectro or photoelectrocatalysis, is a type of the heterogeneous catalysis. But I have actually written heterogeneous nanocatalysis because uh, I am correlating heterogeneous nanocatalysis in my research lab with the organic transformation reaction. As you know, millions of the organic conversions are known and most of the organic conversions are supported by the catalyst and those catalysts are the typical inorganic materials. Either these are the metals or these are the oxides or these are the sulfides. So the, those inorganic if you actually transform those inorganic catalysts in nano dimension, means nano nano catalyst or the nano dimension, then you can actually imagine the surface area will increase, the rate of reaction will become increase, or the reaction which actually completing earlier in five hours, ten hours, fifteen hours, now it will complete in fraction of uh, minutes or the fraction of seconds because of the high surface area. So since there are millions of organic conversions are imported, I will come back to slide, this slide later. First, actually, I will speak over why actually hydrogen is so important, why water splitting reactions are so important, why this phenomenon like photocatalysis, photoelectrocatalysis or electrocatalysis are so important because of the uh, energy crisis actually. And the cause of the energy crisis are uh, due to overconsumption of energy, overpopulation, for infrastructure or the wastage of energy. So basically, the hydrogen fuel actually, uh, actually you have the different type of the energy. Uh, one is the non-renewable energy, which came uh, from the fossil fuels like the third petrol or that kind of things. And uh, other energy is the uh, renewable energy, uh, which came from like the wind energy or the process, process, uh, lot of procedures are there, which were generally adopted by uh, the scientists or the government. But nowadays, actually, uh, uh, major countries are working or looking for green energy uh, or the clean fuel. So basically, hydrogen is a green energy or clean fuel that actually when consumed in fuel cell, it produces only water electricity. So this is a green energy. This is carbon-free, highly abundant, and uh, uh, more energy than that of the gasoline. Hydrogen is environmental friendly and has zero negative impact on environment. So basically, overall water is splitting. Uh, either it is the photocatalysis, electrocatalysis, or photoelectrocatalysis. It's considered as the most prominent methodology for water splitting, where you break down the water into the hydrogen gas to produce economical hydrogen to resolve energy crisis. So basically, to resolve the energy crisis, everyone is looking over hydrogen production. So being the scientist, since actually we all are scientists, and we actually will give the solution to the uh, generally the splitting of water is facilitated by the uh, light source and if you talk about the solar spectrum of sun then it's 47 percent it's 46 to 47 percent having the visible light point so if we are able to derive visible light driven photocatalyst then this procedure becomes economically viable because actually you can directly use the sunlight to facilitate the photocatalysis, photocatalytic reaction. Right? So if you have the visible light driven photocatalysis, then it will have the optical band gap in the visible region. Because actually it can actually transform or it can actually uh, facilitate the jumping of the electrons from valence band to conduction band. So actually uh, we are looking for the visible light driving photocatalyst so that actually we can increase the photocatalytic activity uh, and uh, it can be done by actually decreasing the 
side of the material or increasing the surface area. So that actually we can actually tune the optical band gap. And if you are able to tune the optical band gap by looping of some materials, then we have to bring down by optical uh, band gap tuning uh, to the their optical band gap to the visible light or visible range. So that actually visible light active photocatalyst could be designed. So this is our actually main target. First is the to design the visible light active photocatalyst. And uh, I already actually spoken over this slide. Now what is water splitting? What is water splitting? I have made this slide very interesting for PG and the PhD students. I'm telling you the truth. What is splitting actually? What is splitting is a chemical approach which actually enables the hydrogenation by breaking of water into elemental composition, hydrogen and the oxygen. So this is the main reaction. Why the H2 change into H2 plus uh, oh, so this is cycle actually uh, in the water splitting phenomena you have to generate hydrogen then you have you should have the hydrogen storage tank and the hydrogen storage place and then you can use this hydrogen as hydrogen fuel right so in the photocatalytic water splitting we have to break down water with the sunlight or with the uh, visible light so actually when we expose the uh, we, we can expose our material, then it can actually uh, generate electrons and holes, electrons the conduction band and the uh, uh, holes in the uh, valence band by the absorption of the light by a photocatalyst. So uh, actually it allows the separation of the photogenetic electrons and the holes here, here, here in the valence band and the uh, conduction band. And then the holes are then used to oxidize water to produce oxygen and these electrons solution with the help of the visible or the uh, UV light as the requirement of your material. So basically in photoelectro uh, catalytic water splitting process, the semiconducting materials uh, with the help of uh, the light energy dissociate water into the hydrogen and the oxygen. The reactions uh, actually nearly same, uh, the electrochemical reactions are same, but they shall be sitting here and I heat it, uh, silver and gold nanoparticles with the help of uh, reverse microemulsion methods, monochemical methods, holochemical methods, published large number of papers. In fact, uh, his paper is most cited from uh, my research lab. Even one, two, three, uh, four papers which are most cited actually. Uh, the main, main, main work was done by uh, Dr. Wani. So, uh, actually, what is the uh, strategy for material selection? Because actually, uh, this area uh, is uh, this uh, research rich area nanocatalysis. So, uh, how would you choose actually uh, material? What are the solution? And I could have the uh, uh, hydrogen and the electron source the surface where you can absorb four nitrophenol and uh, uh, the four nitrophenol could actually uh, reduce into the intermediate for uh, nitrophenolate and which finally convert into the four amino. Then uh, there's the group of nanoparticles. So these are the detailed uh, water splitting studies. And here you could see we have actually, actually we do the uh, hydrogen evolution experiment for this particular uh, study using sodium sulfide and sodium sulfide as the uh, sacrificial agent. And here it shows that the 5% dysprosium group as a local nanoparticles can generate. Uh, uh, this is uh, copper chromate nanoparticles and. Uh, very beautiful excel diffraction you could see over here. And uh, it's having the average range size of 40 nanoparticles, high hydrogen generation. Silver dope SNO2 nanoparticles potentially act as nanocatalyst for uh, mm -hmm. organocatalysis or the organic transformations from 4 nitrophenol to 4 aminophenol. A significant energy of uh, 94%. And uh, the hydrogen evaluation is to multiple is from Karsh Media. Dr. Shah Ramadwani Ramanju, he worked on silver and gold nanoparticles in my research uh, lab. And in fact, he was my first PhD student by always having affection for uh, Shah. Uh, so he's from, uh, also from Kashmir, from your college. Uh, Dr. Iswan, he's also from Kashmir. Mm -hmm. Umar Farooq. Questions from, uh, uh, from the part famous. 
uh, like uh, the first question is uh, by I this suggest to people more uh, more efficiently they want kind of actually uh, the materials that they have for making glasses or uh, the nanotechnology right so am i audible audible yeah okay okay uh, thank you shaf sir for providing me this opportunity to present the formal vote of thanks uh, good afternoon all uh, i am very much grateful and i take this moment to express my gratitude and deep regards to the resource person of the event professor toki rehmat sir i am pretty sure that after listening to your good self everyone the faculty as well as the students would have been inspired to do research in nanochemistry i am my sincere thanks to principal dr kuldeep kumar sharma without whom sport the event could not have been organized 